Welcome to the EKG Guy. If this is your first time, I'm glad you're joining us, and welcome back if you're returning. So we're going through our online EKG coding reference guide, which is now made available to everyone. And what you want to do if you want access is you have to put this link into your search bar. You'll come to this page where you'll enter your email address, click submit, check your email, and in your email you'll have a link that will give you access to it. Okay, and that's this here. And we've gone through part one where we looked at the general features of the EKG and normal EKG, atrial abnormalities, different types of rhythm, sinus, atrial, junctional, ventricular. We went through the conduction blocks at the AV node. Uh, we're going through now part four. And in this lecture, we're going to look at left axis deviation. So how to determine it, when are certain times that we may see it, um, and so forth. Now, if you want access to more of our course and our books and all that, you can go to www.ekg.md, and then you can look at our course. There's a number of other things practiced, other lectures, uh, but note that our course has at least uh, over 150, over 30 hours of video that are separate from the free content where we have over 300 videos online. Okay, so the course is separate, comes with books, calipers, and so forth. So you can check it out there if you're interested. So let's get started. So left axis deviation. All right, so how do we determine axis? I think this is something that is uh, often difficult, uh, usually early on when learning. So let's see if we can simplify it here. Okay, and there's multiple ways to determine axis. And when we talk about axis, we're talking about ventricular axis. So ventricular axis, okay, is what we're talking about here. You may also see it on the EKG as an R, as the R wave axis. Now everything has an axis. There's a P wave axis, there's an ST segment axis, a T wave axis. But when you hear axis, you we tend to talk about this R axis or ventricular axis, and it tends to be in the frontal plane. So because it's in the frontal plane, we use the limb leads. So specifically, when you're looking here, you want to look at the limb leads here. Okay, this is from a standard 12 lead EKG. You don't need to look at the precordial leads, all right? Although there's a horizontal plane that you can find in axis, but oftentimes we're talking about the frontal plane axis, all right? And so let's look at what is normal. So if we draw out our quadrant system, and this is something you wanna just keep to memory. And when we do this, this is considered zero degrees, okay? This is considered positive 90 degrees, okay? It's like a circle. This would be positive 180 degrees, Okay, it could also be negative 180 degrees because if we go the other way, this is negative 90 degrees. Okay, so notice going this way, it's negative, this way, it's positive. And you want to keep that in mind because that's how we need to keep our uh, the system in place. So from zero to positive 90 degrees. Okay, so what is normal? All right, well, when we're talking about the ventricular axis, you can think of the left ventricle making up the most muscle mass of both ventricles. And normal axis in adults, okay, and those are who we tend to deal with the most, is between negative 30, okay, and positive 110 degrees. All right. Now, some may say 100 degrees, but anyways, everything between here is normal in our adult patients. Children tend to have more of a rightward axis, which means it's over on this side, and eventually switches more leftward as they get older, and the left ventricle becomes the main ventricle of the heart. Remember, early on in infancy, towards the end of gestation, the right ventricle really is acting uh, as um, the main ventricle of the heart as it's bypassing the uh, lung circulation during that period, okay? Eventually, uh, after birth, the left ventricle starts to dominate. So that's normal axis. As we said here, this is a right axis deviation, meaning everything between this region here, okay? Left axis deviation is everything between here. So that negative 30 to the negative 90, just as we wrote here. So this is left axis deviation. And everything uh, from this point onward, from negative 80 to the negative uh, 180, or negative 90 to ne negative 180, this is what we call a uh, right superior axis, okay? So right 
and then superior, okay? Another uh, way you may hear it is called a northwest axis because this is north, this is west, so this would be a northwest axis. Some may also call it no man's land because really not much shows up there. You may see ventricular tachycardia show up there, and that's actually uh, some criteria that people use when uh, trying to diagnose VT. So let's look here. How do we find access? All right, so again, that's kind of our framework we use. So if we draw out this again, okay, we have zero degrees here, positive 90 degrees, negative 90 degrees, and plus or minus 180 degrees, okay? Now you also have to know where these leads sit. And the leads that we wanna focus on early on when learning is that lead one sits here at zero degrees and lead AVF sits down here. So I want you to focus on lead one and lead AVF, okay? And remember, we're looking at the limb lead. So here's one and here's AVF, and we're finding the ventricular axis, so we're going to focus on those QRS complexes, okay? And we can also find use the T-wave axis, but in this case, we're focusing on these big complexes here. So here's lead one, and notice you're looking that, it, are these complexes mostly positive or negative? Notice that this one is mostly positive, meaning above the baseline. And because it's mostly positive, here's lead one, it's the positive end of lead one, and that means the impulse is going towards lead one, okay? So positive impulse going towards the positive end of lead one. If you look at AVF, here's the baseline. It's mostly negative. So again, here's the positive end of AVF, but this one is going away. It's negative, going away from it, all right? So it's going away from it. And what does that mean? That means that the axis lies somewhere between these two arrows, somewhere in this region. But notice that left axis deviation is from that negative 30 degrees, which is about right here. So there's another step we have to do here, okay? And that is determining, is the axis in this region here, where it would be normal, or is it over here that it would be a left axis deviation? So how do we do that? Well, we use another lead, and that lead that we use here is lead two. Lead two is this one, the positive end of lead two, okay? And that comes out here at positive 60 degrees. So lead two, the positive end is about here. All right, and why is that lead important? Why do we use it? Well. In fact, 90 degrees are perpendicular to lead two. So if you were to do a perpendicular 90 degrees to it, it would actually fall right on that negative 30 degrees, okay? And that's important because if it is positive, that means it's going to go towards lead two and put us in this normal region. If it is negative, it'll go away from lead two and put us in this region. Okay, so let's look at lead two. So lead two is here, and if you were to draw a baseline, you can see that there's some positive, but most of it is negative. This is mostly negative, and therefore going away from lead two. So here's lead two. That means the arrow is gonna go this way. So hopefully that makes sense. So you have these three arrows, and this third was to determine is it in this normal range or is it in this left axis deviation range? And because it's going away from lead two, that puts us in this region here, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. In fact, the axis in this one was negative 40 degrees, so about right here, okay? And that's what we would consider left axis deviation okay, in a, an adult patient. So what's what do we see this with? Well, we can see left axis deviation with a left anterior fascicular block. In fact, that's often how we diagnose it, how, depending how far shifted that axis is. You can see it in the left bundle branch block as that late secondary uh, force is coming leftward. You can see it in inferior MI because that inferior portion of the heart is now taken out, and so most of it is pushed superior, posterior, and leftward, okay? You can see it in left ventricular hypertrophy as the left ventricle starts to increase in muscle mass, whether it's from aortic stenosis or uh, hypertension or anything that's increasing that pressure, that demand of that left ventricle. 
Uh, you can see it in COPD, so chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, osteum primum, atrial septal defect, as well as hyperkalemia. And you can really see almost anything with hyperkalemia. So hopefully that makes sense. Again, the leads you want to focus on early on when learning are leads one, leads AVF, okay? And when you have to determine where in this region it is, you can use lead two to help differentiate it, okay? If it's negative in lead two, it'll put you in that left axis deviation. If it's positive, it'll put you here normal, okay? And that's really how we determine axis. So again, normal axis in adults is between negative 30 and negative 90 degrees. And that's what we use here at Mayo Clinic. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. Now, just to keep you in mind uh, of our course material that we have available, so again, if you go to our website, www.ekg.md, okay, so this is our website, and what you'll notice is that if you go to the EKG course here, okay, you'll find stuff that's separate. So notice that we have a number of topics, practice material, lectures, a way for you to contribute, and this is the course here over here so you'll notice we have over 300 videos or so and that's more on youtube there's another hundred more than 100 about 200 videos that are available with the course so those are separate videos and this course is really designed to take you from a beginner to advanced interpreter okay so completely separate from what you're getting online for free okay these are um, course material that comes with it so notice that you have a book Okay, and then you also have the pocket guide available. So you can choose which format. They are the same thing, both these uh, book and the pocket guide, uh, different formats. Uh, I really like this small one because you can keep it in your white coat if you're in the clinic or in your pocket and it's really available on the go. Now with the book, you also get videos. So notice these are the videos, okay? And these are a video for every single page in that book. So it's over 30 hours of video. Now there's a number of practice material that I continue to upload there. Okay, we'll have practice questions coming soon. Uh, so all of that's available. Again, this is separate from all the free material that you get already. Okay, so this is more high yield stuff. This is what we used to teach our uh, technicians here and our students here at Mayo Clinic. And it's used now among many institutions. So use, uh, check that out. Now, what it also includes are calipers. So yes, you get calipers with this course, okay? Um, I don't know anyone else that offers that, but you do get calipers. I think they're very helpful and they can, uh, you know, if you know how to use them correctly, uh, can help to identify different uh, arrhythmias that are going on, okay? And then you also get our pocket EKG reference. Okay, this was something we've put together as we were developing course for the fellows. Uh, and this is really nice. It has every code, as you saw earlier, laid out there, very small pocket guide available. I had help with uh, my colleague, Dr. Peter Noseworthy, who's the head of the EKG lab here at Mayo Clinic in editing it. So this is something that we use um, and we found very helpful. So Go to the EKG course, you'll see examples of lectures, okay, why we developed this, okay. A lot of it came about from myself struggling with learning EKGs, having a father that was an interventional cardiologist and, you know, still struggling. So uh, my struggle is a struggle that I don't want you to have in learning them, okay. You can read all those introductory books, but honestly, they are not uh, enough, okay, and you find yourself using other resources which is part of the learning process. I wanted to expedite that process for you and make it less uh, inefficient uh, in pretty much what I struggled with going and learning through EKG. So again, from beginner to advanced level with this course, uh, you get the book, the calipers, the coding reference, video access, okay? And now we're offering 25% off. 25% off, put that code in on checkout and uh, you'll have yourself 25% um, off that will even, it's pretty much covers the cost of what we use to print the material. So 
Uh, we don't really make much off it. It's more to help our learners grow and really be able to contribute to patient care. That's why we do this, and we love doing it. So thank you so much for your support. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them below, and we're happy to answer them. All right. Have a great day.